Hey guys, and welcome back to another video in this launch control training series. This is Chris Deal with Real Estate Investing Made Easy. And in this video, we're gonna discuss everything there is to know about the initial message templates, the quick replies, as well as the follow-up message templates. Uh, we've already spoken about drip templates, so you should have everything you need to know there. So let's dive in and get started. On the left-hand side of the screen, where you have all of your options within launch control, one of the options is templates. And this is gonna take you to all of the different templates so you'll have initial message templates you'll have quick reply templates and then you'll have follow-up message templates now let's just talk about these different types of templates so initial message templates and follow-up message templates are basically the same thing but what they wanted to do was sort these in a way where you can create templates for specific follow-ups so if you want to do follow like short-term or long-term follow-ups you can have specific message templates that are geared just around follow-up so for example, let's say you message 100 people on January 1st, 80 of those people never respond to you, and in 30 days you want to send a message to them, but you don't want it to be a brand new message, you want it to kind of reference back to that initial message, you'll create a message template uh, for that follow-up message saying, hey, I was just circling back to the text we sent you about a month or so ago about your property on 123 Main Street, wanted to see if you had reconsidered blah, 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 whatever you want that template to be, okay? So that's really the only difference between initial messages and follow-up messages, okay? Now, you don't necessarily need to use that type of process. You could just use the initial messages and send it out again and again and again and again. Um, but if you wanna use it at the highest level, we highly recommend to create follow-up messages for short-term follow-ups, long-term follow-ups. And if you sign up for our Marketing Launch Accelerator package, you'll get some of our highest performing uh, initial message templates along with our follow-up message templates and and all of our quick replies and drip automations automatically entered right into your own launch control so you can use them and get started day one and hit the ground running and really accelerate your performance working within launch control. So let's dive in here. So the initial messages, we have some here, but we're gonna go in and create a new message. And really, you're just gonna start building this out. And so you wanna create a template name. So we're gonna create a name test. And you might wanna have, you want, might wanna select a type. So if you're doing something that's specific to, you know, vacant or absentee. Uh, and this is just so you can filter your messages so it's just easier to find them. So if you have a type and you know you're importing a list that's all around vacant or absentee, you know you can just choose from these templates that fall under the vacant absentee type and they're gonna be relevant, okay? Now, first things first, you'll see on the right-hand side, you've got your characteristics that are required. So you have to have a minimum of eight characters, at least two text spinners. Uh, each text spinner must have at least three elements, must have a merge field, and must, not, must have no negative keywords. So a negative keyword, for example, might be cash. So notice, as soon as I type in the word cash, it's going to deselect, must have no negative keywords, and it's telling me cash is a negative keyword, all right? The other thing is there's going to be a drop down that will show you uh, what are negative keywords and it'll give you all the negative keywords that the carriers look at and basically say that the propensity for a message to be spam is significantly higher when using some of these keywords. Now, there's ways to get around these negative keywords. Um, so if I wanted to use the word cash and I wanted to get around the spam blocker, the simple solve for that is change S to a dollar sign and now all of a sudden, notice it's no longer considered a, a negative keyword. So get creative with your, your words. Um, you know, sometimes we'll have, we'll use a thesaurus and look for synonyms of words that we want to use that are maybe negative keywords, um, but we don't want to misspell them. Um, another thing you can do is, for example, like the word selling. If I type in the word selling, that's obviously a negative keyword, but if I delete one of the L's and I do like a capital I, it kind of looks like an L. So that kind of beats the spam blocker. Or you can also use just the vertical line uh, and that can also beat the spam blocker. And it's not clearly identifiable. If you look real closely, you can see the line is slightly taller than the L. But little tricks like this can help you get around some of these negative keywords, okay? So you're just gonna wanna write your message and utilize the spinner token feature. So I always start with a spinner token and that's because I just want to make it easy for me to create a template. And so we're going to start with, hi, how are you? Or, you know, um, hey there, right? And so now I hit the check mark. And now I already have a minimum of eight characters. And you can see two spinner tokens. I have one of two spinner tokens. So one spinner token is already done. 
One of the other things is a merge field, so I might use first name. So now when this message gets sent and it rotates, it's going to say, hi, John, or hello, John, or hey there, John, comma. I wanted to check in with you to see if you have considered, see, that's a negative keyword. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change that. Uh, if you have thought about getting rid of your now I might want to do another spinner token. House, place, property. Okay, so property is a negative keyword. So we don't want to get rid of, we want to get rid of property and we want to say home. And then we're going to hit check. Okay, so now we can see that so far I've already met all of the criteria for this template to be accepted, but it's obviously not a finished message. So we've got the, hey there, John, I wanted to check in with you and see if you've considered, see if you have thought about getting rid of your house, place, or home at property address, question mark. And I might add a smiley face, right? So that's message one, and we can see how many, um, how many characters we have, as well as how many variations of the message there are. So because of the number of spinner tokens we have, this is going to create nine different variations. So if I hit next, now this is going to go to message two, and I'll start to build that out. Each of your initial message templates is going to be comprised of four messages and then an alternate message. Now, the alternate message you'll notice has different uh, criteria has to have a minimum of eight characters cannot have any merge fields and must have no negative keywords so this is designed for specific types of uh, cell phones or for people where that are in your list where you don't have uh, a name or an address and you don't want to reference that it, it's just going to be a basic message hey I wanted to see if you had considered selling your property it's not specific to them or their specific scenario um, but again that's for people that end up in your list that you don't have a name or you don't have a property address for um, that you're gonna send a message to that way they're not missed and it doesn't say hi first name it just says hi all right, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, so you'll go in, you create all these messages and then save your template and it'll end up in your message templates. Um, so we're not gonna save that there. And you're gonna do the same thing with your follow-up messages. You go and create your message and you'll notice that it looks exactly the same as a new message template. And then finally, you have your quick replies. Your quick replies, quick replies are a really awesome feature. They can be a gift and a curse, right? And what I mean is that if you have too many quick replies, then it's not a quick reply at all. Uh, if you have too few quick replies, then you're gonna find yourself manually responding to a lot of these messages. So what our goal is when we create quick replies is we wanna look at what are common responses that we get when we're sending text messages out and what is our standard response to those questions or responses. So for example, um, and we have different categories, so let's just go ahead and, and select a category, right? So um, let's say not interested. So we'll create a couple different scenarios if somebody says not interested, right? So, and the title, so the category is not interested, right? There might be a couple different ways somebody's not interested, right? They might say, so if their response is it's not for sale, I might say this this quick reply is going to say god i completely understand thank you for letting me know you have my number if anything changes have a great rest of your day right um so i could send that one or i can send a different one the great thing about the quick replies is all this does is it doesn't automatically send it when you select the quick reply it's going to put it in the message box and then you can manually edit that message. So if you wanted to add anything to this, basically the whole goal is to save you time. So if they said it's not for sale, got it, completely understand, thank you for letting me know, you have my number if anything changes, have a great rest of your day. I might wanna add in there, you know, thanks for letting me know, and maybe I wanna change this and delete, you have my number if anything changes. Um, you know, maybe you wanna get rid of the whole second half of that message and say, uh, do you have any particular time frame you might consider selling? Now, they're like, well, I might think about it in six months, 
right? So you just save your time from having to type in this whole first half just by clicking a button, and then you just add the custom text right after that. Um, so you can modify that and make adjustments. But we've put together some different categories uh, for the different types of responses we get, and our goal is always to have at least two, maybe three different types of responses, different variations within each category that will kind of encompass all of the different standard responses that we expect to receive. All right, so that's everything there is to know about the initial messages, the quick replies, and the follow-up messages. Uh, if you like what you see here, definitely don't forget to click the like button, hit subscribe, click the bell for notifications so you can get notified of any of our new videos as we're constantly creating new content around launch control and all of the other tools and systems that we use. And if you want to learn more about the templates that we use, uh, we, you know, like I mentioned before, we have a marketing launch accelerator program or package, uh, which is going to give you all of our best performing templates, quick replies, drip campaigns, follow-up messages, really set your launch control up to be optimized the way that we use it for ourselves as well as all of our done for you marketing clients and if you want to learn more about that click the link below and we'll get you some more information and help you out there thanks again for watching and stay tuned for the next video in this launch control training series